No, trust me, you'll want to make time for this. You're looking for something big to keep your museum in business. Well, there's something big on that island. Real big. I hope you're ready for a little monster hunt. Hey everybody, Jake here, and today I'm actually going to review a video game. I've played video games for many, many years. I grew up playing video games, as I'm sure some of you have, many of you, um, if you're my younger audience. And if you want to see a full gameplay video of this, it is about two hours long or so. I'll leave a link to that down in the description. It's completely unedited, and it was my first time recording some stuff, so it may be a little janky. But let's go ahead and get into the review of this game. This is called Choo Choo Charles. It is about a spider train running amok on this island and killing, eating the inhabitants. The plot of the game revolves around a mining company ran by Warren Charles III. They were here to mine whatever, and somehow there's a spider train. A lot of the lore is delved into through letters that you'll discover along your way. You can read those if you want to, you don't have to. You will also get some of the story from interactions with NPCs. There are other NPCs that don't tell you anything important apart from how much they like pickles. I need my pickles! But most of them contribute something to the lore of the world. So the plot of the game, as you step into it, you are an archivist. And you arrive on this island to take out this train. Why they hired an archivist, I don't know. Some people call you a monster hunter in the game. That's probably a more apt description. It implies there may be some previous monster hunting that maybe the company will look into in the future, or this one person, because this game was made by one individual. And you can tell that at certain points, you know, with some of the graphics limitations and things like that, plot holes, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So you arrive on this island, and this man greets you, says, hi, you know, you're here to kill this monster. Here's a train, gives you an old train. Using this train, you have to defeat Charles. That's the point of it. Charles is the monster spider train that you are here to kill with your hopefully superior train. By the time you get to the end of the game with your upgrades and everything, your train should be pretty capable and will be able to take out Charles, hopefully. Throughout the game, you collect scrap, just piles of metal basically, and you use this to heal your train as well as to increase the speed, damage, and armor. All these things are extremely, extremely important, and I recommend if you're playing through and you're struggling, try to keep some reserve scrap. That being said, when you're not on your train, you are completely vulnerable. You can get chased down by both Charles as well as the train cult members. Um, there are these people running around in train masks with guns. It seems to be just shotguns, and they take out a good chunk of your life when they hit you, so kind of be wary of them. You do have to interact with them to some degree, though, because on your mission, you're going to have to collect three eggs. No one knows what's in these eggs. It's not really explained all that much. It's kind of implied that they are more spider trains or something like that. So your mission is to get three of these eggs, take them to a temple, deposit them, and then all of a sudden, you know, Charles will be there and you can fight him to the death. Because normally, when he runs into you, you shoot him for a little bit and he goes away. You don't want that to happen. You want to be able to take him down. Using those eggs, you can achieve that, theoretically. Now, this is where the game has some weaker points. There is some stealth mechanics that they've implemented. They're not all that great. You, you're mainly going to be running from these cult members, trying to get away once you've grabbed these eggs. There is a nice exploration element to the game. It does encourage you to look around and find things. Obviously, you're going to find a decent amount of scrap this way. The bulk of the game is going to revolve around you doing missions. There are three types. There are... Essential missions, non-essential missions, and then weapon missions. So essential missions are required to progress the story. Non-essential just get you scrap and maybe a funny little anecdote or something along the way. And weapon missions get you new weapons. There are several types in the game. In my playthrough, I really only got two. And some of these NPCs are pretty funny. Some of them are somewhat entertaining. But they will give you the bulk of the scrap when you complete your missions. On those, you can get, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 scrap sometimes, whereas if you just look around, you're going to find a couple here and there. So your best option for sustainability is to do these missions to collect as much scrap as possible, especially for the last fight. I had some issues with that, 
because I didn't have enough scrap, so make sure you hoard it. That's about it for gameplay, so let's go ahead and touch on the graphics a little bit. Again, it's a one-man team, I don't expect the world here, but stuff looks pretty rough. Especially for the price they're asking, which is $20. Getting a first-person shooter, basically, <laughs> for $20 with, uh, you know, a decent-sized open world, you're going to be pushing something. So a lot of the stuff doesn't look that great. There's no lip syncing. Everyone talks to you via telepathy, basically. There are seams on the arms and things like that that are very noticeable when you zoom in. Also, the creator seems to have this insane fascination with putting what appears to be Sharpie all over everything, including the train. But for the most part, everything looks acceptable. To me, it looks like a PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 era game. Not stellar but acceptable, like I said. Looks like it could run on the Switch or the Steam Deck if you have one of those. And it ran okay on my PC, um, apart from some choppiness because of the recording. Audio is pretty good here, and you're going to need the audio turned up on this game. Need is a bit of a strong word, but you're going to want it. That will alert you when there are cultists nearby because they'll be whistling, as well as when Charles is going to appear and attack you. There's a lot of like ominous music and creepy noise in the game, but it's a very apparent when Charles is coming after you. And you're going to need to know that because he can, again, appear out of nowhere. It's actually pretty funny, too, because some of the NPCs have interactions with him, and they'll react to him being near them. So that's a main rundown of the game, what to expect, things like that. What did I like about the game? I like the exploration element. I like that they did dive into some of the lore. I really, really wish they had done more. Maybe not forcing it down your throat, but leaving it mainly to letters is just not the best way to do it, especially considering that there aren't a ton of these. I guarantee you I missed some of the letters. I guarantee I missed some of the lore. But what I did read was entertaining. There's even hints of a possible, you know, other entity that exists in this world called Gus the Bus. And if you play to the end of the game, you get more hints at, you know, a potential follow-up or... If it's not a follow-up, you know, an apocalyptic event, assuming it's not isolated to this island. So certain stuff like that's really fun. The gameplay loop is is pretty fun as well, honestly. It's very simplistic. It's a lot of, you know, fetch quests, which a lot of people don't like. They're not that bad here. The main name of the game is run around, look for stuff, get stronger, fight Charles. But you are encouraged to explore and look around, and that's nice. And the world itself is not bad at all. I also don't get that scared by horror games typically because I, I consume a lot of horror related content but this game kind of had me on edge the whole time not necessarily because you know it was horrifying but I don't like spiders and knowing this thing could pop up out of anywhere and just make me you know jump a little bit was a little unnerving so I kind of did appreciate that okay on to what I disliked I was not a huge fan of the length of the game. Um, it can be longer if you want it to be. I, I did kind of rush through it, not intentionally, but I beat the game in about two hours or so. Like I said, you can see a full gameplay down in the description. I really wish they had done more. And I know this was limited to one person, and I know that the budget probably wasn't that great. But with how well this game's doing, I'm sure the budget for the next one will be vastly, vastly superior. And hopefully lead to a really, really engaging game. Maybe Gus the Bus will come out. I don't know. Maybe they'll do Choo Choo Charles too. As mentioned previously, I also wasn't a huge fan of the stealth mechanics or the lack thereof. The game gives you options to lean either left or right, but that's the extent of the stealth gameplay. And you're meant to hide from these cult members multiple times. Most of the time, I would just go into the mine. Once I ran into them, I would start sprinting, grab the egg, get out. That's kind of the bulk of what the stealth gameplay was for me. I wasn't a huge fan of a lot of the graphical issues and things like that, but it, again, it's kind of to be expected. The last thing I didn't like really was the price. $20 is just a little steep for this game. I really wish it had come out around 10 I think for $10, this would be an incredible value. Even at 15 I would still probably recommend it. At $20, I would say maybe wait for a sale, unless this seems like the type of game that you would just dive headfirst into and love it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like I said, check out the full gameplay link in the description below if you'd like to. And let me know if you want to see more video games and things like that. I do have another review coming up soon of a physical product that is not a knife or a pen or something like that. Hope you all have a wonderful day, and uh, thanks for watching again. Bye.